Hello, I'm John from Tesla Gurus, and today we're going to take a look back to a couple of events that we ran uh, about a year ago at Thruxton Motor Racing Circuit in Hampshire. They've actually got a skid pan down there, a very sophisticated one in fact. It's made of specially polished concrete that's kept wet with a sprinkler system that uses pure water so it doesn't damage your car. And we took a couple of groups of Tesla owners down there to try their cars out, see what it was like in simulated winter conditions and we had a variety of tyres on those cars so it was quite interesting to see exactly how they handled what grip they got. You'll see later on we did some stopping distance tests which were particularly interesting so I thought I'd go back and have a look at these videos again with you and just talk you through them what we got up to and maybe we can learn something from it. Now one of the big questions that always comes up every year in the winter time in the UK is winter tyres do we need them here and the question really is not an easy one to answer because it depends where you live if you were to live in the highlands of scotland and you're expecting uh you know a few inches or a few feet of snow even a few days a year then you could very easily benefit from full winter tires if you live in the south then maybe all season tires are a better choice but i think what i want to show with this video is that actually you don't need snow to benefit from all season or winter tires just the fact that the temperature has dropped to under 10 degrees centigrade means that summer tires the sort of tires that are fitted to these cars from the factory just don't work very well so a winter tire or an all-season tire uses a different compound of rubber also the design of the tread is optimized for wintry conditions and it'll give you a lot more traction and grip even in the dry when the temperature is cold but in wet conditions, in freezing temperatures, the difference is even more clear. So we wanted to set up a test that would show how the tyres that these cars came on performed and we can also compare them against a couple of cars that had all season and winter tyres fitted. So we ran some stopping tests. Uh, the cars accelerated up to 30 miles an hour. We put a cone on the course and when you get to that cone you hit the brakes as hard as you can, try and stop the car in the shortest distance. It's important you hit the brakes as hard as possible so the ABS engages and that way it's the tyres that we're measuring, not the braking system. So let's start with the results from the Model 3s and as you can see I, I should have used a wider lens. I didn't really expect them to go quite that far. There, there was a little variation between the cars and um, even on the same tyres, probably tread depths, um, but uh, even then most of them just sailing on by. Uh, the last car we've got will come up in a second and as you can see that's uh, significantly shorter surprise surprise that had the full winter tyres fitted. We also had four Model S's that day and they were a slightly heavier car so we might expect them to go further but in fact on the Michelin PS3's that this one was fitted with it was about the same as the worst Model 3. The, the surprise was the second one on Avon ZX7's which is not an all season tyre it's a summer tyre but it fared very well indeed and as you can see the Bridgestone and the Vredestein were fairly similar but still a big difference from the summer tyre. About a month later we went back to Thruxton for another day with another group of Tesla owners, this time mainly Model 3s but we did have one S there and a similar idea we were stopping from 30 miles an hour braking at the cone and just seeing how far they go and this time the graphics were a little bit better and I used the wide angle lens I've learnt from my mistakes. So we started off with the um, Michelin Cross Climate, which is an all-season tyre, and the Bridgestone Weather Control, so the orange lines are all-season tyres. The blue is a winter tyre, full winter tyre. The Goodyear Ultra Grip, which is uh, not a common tyre, but it still fared well. And now we're going to get back into the summer tyres, the uh, Michelin Pilot Sport and the Michelin Pilot Sport 4. And as we can see that already the summer tyres are not faring very well in these conditions. The, the skid pan at Thruxton is, as we said, polished concrete and it's kept wet. So it probably simulates something like a wintry icy uh, road rather than sheet ice or packed snow, which means that it is actually quite good at doing this sort of comparison. Uh, we would expect a summer tyre on sheet ice or snow to probably go twice as far as this but these are the sorts of conditions that you're likely to find in the UK uh, in, in the winter. So with all our cars completing the test, we can see in relative terms from these graphics how the summer tyres are a lot worse than the blue winter tyre or the orange all-season tyre, 
But what does that actually translate to in terms of distances? Well, in the highway code, stopping distances are given at different speeds. And the way they work it out is they talk about the thinking distance, which is the time it takes for you to see the hazard and actually hit the brake pedal, and then the actual stopping distance, and they add that together. Now, because we've used a cone here as the point where you press the brake pedal, we don't need to worry about the thinking distance. We're just going to concentrate on the stopping distance. In the dry, that stopping distance from the highway code is 14 metres. They suggest doubling it in the wet to 28 metres and multiplying by 10 on ice to 140 metres. Now, as I already said, the conditions on the skid pan are not like sheet ice, so we're not expecting those sorts of distances. But uh, certainly they are um, worse than a normal wet road. And so what we actually saw was a difference of 30 metres between the summer tyres and the all seasons or winters. And 30 metres, think about it, is quite a long way when you're trying to stop your car in an emergency situation. So my view is in the winter time, I think it's a good idea to consider all seasonal winter tyres. It really could make a difference between you having a nasty accident and being able to stop your car in time. And if you want more information on winter tyres and tyres generally, I, I'd recommend a very good channel called Tyre Reviews. I'm going to put the link up at the top there and also in the description below. So that's the end of our stopping tests at the skid pan. One of the other things that we got up to while we were there uh, was to try our own Model 3 performance in various different modes. One of the things that's very good about Model 3 is that you've got some adjustment you can make to the uh, steering feel, the acceleration, and in previous models you could also select low and standard regen, although that has changed recently. But the beauty of going to a skid pan is that you can try out various driving techniques. Uh, you can try out any adjustments that you can make on your car uh, in complete safety and get a feel for what your car is like when wintry conditions come along. And if you're lucky enough to have a Model 3 performance, you can put it into track mode and you can play around with various settings, including dialing down the stability control, as I've done here, to minus 10. Makes it a little bit more of a handful, but as you can see, it's still very controllable. Um, and it's definitely worth trying this out on a skid pan if you can. I wouldn't recommend trying it on the road though. You'll see on the graphic in track mode that the tyre slip is being displayed um, and you can actually see how much grip you've got on each individual tyre. It's quite interesting. So um, the other thing we tried was putting the handling bias all the way to the rear. Uh, this doesn't actually put all the power to the rear wheels all the time as some might think and you can see that from the way the front tyres are actually lighting up there. The, the power is still distributed between the front and back but it's just a little bit more rear biased um, and obviously that will give you a little bit more fun on a skid pan. So that's the end of our look back at the skid pan days we ran about a year ago when you could still do these sorts of things. We will be doing more of these though um, and subscribe to the channel to find out about those when they're announced. In the meantime, stay safe, drive carefully in the winter conditions and check your tyres regularly to make sure there's enough tread depth and there's no damage to them. It's, it's quite important, especially when the weather's bad. I'll see you next time. My name's John from Tesla Gurus. Bye for now.